So this is etude number four or study number four from Fernando Soares Opus 60. And follow the lesson for free and grab some tips. But if you're interested, I do have an edition of the work and you can find a link for that in the description. So there's 25 etudes in Fernando Soares Opus 60. And so we're at number four. So we're still on the more beginner side, but he's starting to introduce more and more things as he goes. So the first two are relatively straightforward pieces. Number three had some second position playing and some bass note I am kind of playing. And then number four, he really introduces a key signature that guitar players today are, are less familiar with, unless you work more in the jazz world, but with a number of flats. And certainly in this piece, he also introduces a, a rhythm that um, you, you didn't really see in the previous couple of etudes. So he has a dotted eighth note followed by a sixteenth, which in the classical style can be very, um, uh, very crisp, um, not quite like a over dotted baroque you know rhythm but nevertheless it can be quite um aristocratic or or a very defined rhythm so and sometimes for beginners it can, it can be less crisp and a little bit lazy so we want to make sure that we work on the rhythmic aspect and we talk about a few other things um, like the key signature and the right hand fingering so the key signature here is c minor and so we have three flats um, this is less familiar for a lot of um, guitar players, but you can practice your, your C minor scale if you like, but just you want to remember that all your B's are flat and all your um, E's are flat. So no open E's, but closed E's. And also your A's are flat. Um, you can go through a, a natural minor scale if you if you like. minor scale just following the key signature so um, there's that's one aspect of the piece you just have to be familiar with playing in, in this key signature some students will find that difficult at first but really once you get used to it it's quite easy and with the left hand fingering that I have in my, in my edition uh, you just you can get it quite quite easily so the other thing is that rhythm <laughs> Um, in one way, you know, uh, beginners will often subdivide rhythms and they'll be thinking like one E and a two, one E and a two, E and a three, E and a... But of course that's a little impractical. What you really want to do is, is play the rhythm and have an aesthetic for it and make sure that you're just feeling that aesthetic. And whenever you see that rhythm come up, you can, you can just play it because you know what that rhythm is. Not only sounds like, but what it feels like. So it has a little bit of a sharpness to it, right? Or like a little bit of a, a character to it. So you want to make sure that you're, you're feeling that character and that you're not overthinking it. Um, put your metronome on to the quarter note and practice a few times to make sure your rhythm is nice and crisp. And um, be beyond that, um, you just want to make sure that you you just know that rhythm, and you can practice it. You can practice your scales with that rhythm. You know, going through scales with that rhythm to make sure you can feel it properly at all times. But of course, I mean, li listen to the piece a lot, and you can you can imitate the recording. Um, so the other thing is is. I mean, the left hand fingering is pretty straightforward uh, because it's marked, but the right hand fingering, for the most part, I use my thumb on the uh, fifth and sixth strings in this piece uh, just because sometimes they pop out of the texture as a bass voice. Other times that they're, they're at the end of a scale, which seems less appropriate to use it, but nevertheless, um, because I'm often resting my thumb down there, I will play that final note with the thumb. And then the next note is often a jump or a leap up the staff, so I can use the other fingers. Mostly I am alternation, occasional A when there's a leap involved, but. So I just start off with M, I, M, P, and then maybe I would do A here, but you could just do M or I. 
just to, to continue your I am alternation. And sometimes that's the easiest thing to do. You can just say like, okay, I'm gonna use my thumb on that bass note, and then I'm just going to alternate I am fingering, just as if I'm playing a scale. So you just really regulate the piece in scale passages and passages with um, leaps in it so that you can either integrate the thumb or the A finger um, to navigate leaps in the score. <laughs> Any kind of fingering you use is fine as long as you're not repeating fingers a lot. Um, and I think it's just useful to use the thumb on the, on the last note of some of those scales. Thumb, and then either A or M. You know, just to make sense of, of scale passages and then kind of arpeggios, or at least leaps. Beethoven-esque line there. If you're more on the advanced level, you could mute out some of the open strings that end up ringing, but I, I, I really think that's beyond the scope of, of study number four. So if you are at the level where you're interested in keeping a really defined texture and not letting things ring out um, over the bar or something, by all means mute it out, but otherwise I would just stay focused on playing as legato as possible and sustaining those notes within within the bar to some extent because a lot of the bars do form uh, harmonies. If I were to write out all the right hand fingerings for pieces like this, it would be very confusing to follow and very difficult to follow. And I think it's really unnecessary. What you really want to do is become comfortable looking at your music and setting um, technique goals for it. If you've practiced your IM and MA scales and you've practiced arpeggio patterns, then you can really regulate these simple studies into either arpeggios or into scale passages. And then you just apply those technique principles to them. And the, the process of working that out um, when you're practicing and becoming being able to see it on the page and, and do it in your hands is a really important skill that you want to develop and as you go through these studies I'd recommend um, putting some thought into that and instead of writing in every fingering or something like that you can mark a few like if you're going to leap with the A or use the thumb on on a couple bass strings that I mentioned mark those in but then apply concepts to the rest of the music so that you're not following a whole bunch of nitty-gritty fingering but you're applying technique concepts to the music and um, playing through it, uh, staying focused on the musicality of the piece.